What is going on internet? Lou here and today I'm going to be giving you guys a brief review of my new PC. It's a Dell XPS 8300 uh, 6206 and um, I just picked this thing up maybe what four days ago or so and um, I'm gonna give you guys kind of a review from a Linux perspective on this piece of hardware so for those of you who have been using Linux for a while or those of you who've been contemplating using Linux um, part of the battle is hardware compatibility and let me get this out of the way and say that compatibility issues are not Linux related Okay, these problems lie with the hardware um, manufacturers, the OEMs that are producing uh, this hardware. Now, you know, we live in a Windows world, so the main platform that these hardware OEMs are, are manufacturing for is Windows. And, you know, Macintosh is on the rise as well. You know, they're not making their source code available for Linux, and they're not developing for Linux. So what ends up happening is Linux developers have to then reverse engineer and thankfully, they do a fantastic job at it um, because we can buy brand new hardware and we can run Linux on it, you know, but it's not always up to snuff as far as um, compatibility and the open source drivers aren't always as good as the proprietary ones. Um, that's because, again, they're starting from scratch. They're reverse engineering. Okay, so, you know, hardware compatibility, that's an OEM issue. It's not a Linux issue. So um, with that said, you know, it, it's a gamble sometimes when you buy a pre-configured system. Um, whether or not you're going to have to do a lot of work to get Linux up and running properly, or if it's just going to work. Um, thankfully, you know, Linux has come a long way. And for the most part, if you install a distro like Ubuntu, um, you're going to have a working system most of the time. 99% um, working anyway. Um, it just so happens that this particular system has been the easiest Linux install I've had in like 10 years. Um, <laughs> everything just works. I haven't had to mess with anything. I haven't had to fiddle around with anything. It all just works, and it works beautifully. Now, why did I buy a pre-configured system over building my own, uh, my own rig? Well, a couple of reasons. Um, you know, un without a shadow of a doubt, building your own PC is the best way to go. Um, there is no downside to it. You get to selectively choose all of your hardware. Um, you get the most control over your hardware when you build it yourself because you know you're going to get um, unlocked BIOS, so you're able to you know do things like overclock or you know tweak and configure your system to your heart's content. Building your system is the best way to go. You know, for me, a lot of the advantages of building your own system. Um, and a lot of the reasons why people do it, I'm not going to take it, really take advantage or capitalize on those things. Some of those things like overclocking, you know, I don't, I'm not intending on overclocking this PC. So whether my BIOS is locked or unlocked honestly doesn't affect me either way. So um, that's one of the reasons, you know, and the other is if I were to actually assemble um, a rig similar to the one that I bought, it would come very close in price. And so the fact that I found something that's really so closely uh, so closely resembles what I would actually build myself um, I decided to just you know purchase something already assembled and something I can just plug in and run uh, run with so I'm gonna show you guys the specs of um, of my new PC I'll tell you guys a couple of things that I've done to it or I am going to do to it and then I'll, I'll let you know kind of on the Linux end how um, this PC stacks up so let's take a look at the specs All right, um, let's start with the processor. It's got an Intel second gen Core i7. This is the 2600 Core i7. There's also a 2600K. The only difference between the two is the K is unlocked, so you can again overclock and do things like that, whereas the 2600 is not. It is 3.4 gigahertz, that's the base clock speed. It does go up to 3.8 gigahertz with Turbo Boost. Um, for those of you who don't know, basically Turbo Boost, um, if there's applications that are not optimized for multi-core systems, Turbo Boost kicks in and it overcompensates and scales your CPU up um, to give you, you know, better performance. So this supports Turbo Boost. It's got an 8 megabyte cache memory. It's got 12 gigs of system RAM. Now, it's expandable to 16. 
the way it, it goes on this particular motherboard is there's four RAM slots. You've got a pair of four gig sticks and a pair of two gig sticks. I've actually already ordered some crucial RAM, um, another uh, eight gigs worth. So I'll be taking out those two gig sticks and replacing it. So I'll have the maximum 16 gigabytes worth uh, that my motherboard can handle. Of course, it's DDR3 RAM. Uh, it's not a solid state drive. Again, if I was building my own rig, I would I would definitely go with a solid state drive. However, uh, I would also want another internal drive, which you know I'm going to end up basically uh, flipping um, the the configuration here around. I'm going to take this SATA 7200 RPM drive that's that's in here. It's a terabyte drive. I'm going to actually make it a secondary drive just for storage, and I'm going to be purchasing a. I think I've decided on the Crucial uh, Mark IV. SATA 3 SSD. It's a 120 gigabyte uh, SSD drive. I'm going to make that um, my primary drive for the OS, and everything else is going to go on this particular um, 7200 RPM uh, SATA drive. So, you know, that's um, coming probably like a month from now. I'll pick that up. It's got an AMD Radeon HD 6450. I know this is not the best graphics card in the world, but I don't game on my computer. So, this particular graphics card will. Um, you know, do just fine for me. It's it's one gig of dedicated memory. Um, it's got uh, True Studio PC audio. It's 5.1 surround. It's got built-in 802.11 and wireless. Now, this is good because I keep my modem and router in my living room with my Xbox, and I connect wirelessly here in my office. So, um, you know, I love the fact that this came with a wireless card. It would definitely be something I would I would purchase if I was building my own rig. Uh, let's see. It's got two PCI Express slots on it. It's got eight USB ports, which is great because I have a ton of peripheral devices that I use, so eight USB spots uh, comes in handy. And I purchased this as a tower only. It did not come with a monitor. It did come with a keyboard and a laser mouse, and that is pretty much it. All right, so um, so that's it really for the base, for the base specs. Um, this computer <laughs> screams. It is a really, really quick computer. Um, by far the most powerful computer I've, I've owned. Um, I've never really owned kind of a monster of a computer. Um, years ago, I put a system together that was, that was kind of decent, but nothing of this caliber. This is a phenomenal um, setup. It is a really good computer. Um, the a couple of downsides is everything's a little cramped in the case. Um, I would have liked a larger case. It would have, been ma it would have made, um, made you know, upgrading certain things in the future a little bit easier. Um, for instance, like the hard drive, unless I can figure out how to take the front of the, the case off, I'm going to have to take the power supply out to fit the hard drive in. So, you know, that's kind of a pain. Um, so the, the case is a little bit cramped, but this thing is whisper quiet. I mean, I have to check to see if this thing is on half the time. It is so quiet. So the fact that it runs so quiet is really, really nice. Um, the case itself is, is gorgeous. It's uh, piano black. Looks really nice. Um, almost all of it's metal except for the very front. Um, so it's, it's a decent case, pretty nice. It also, oh yeah, it has a um, multimedia card reader on it too. And it has a little gadget uh, tray on the very top of the case. So MP3 player or I've got a um, 500 gig uh, Seagate, Go, uh, Seagate Go drive, I believe it is. And um, I can actually put that external drive uh, right in that gadget tray. fits nicely. So I really like that as well. Um, and again, I, I installed Ubuntu 11.10 on this thing. Um, booted it up, runs blazing fast, no issues, sound works 100%, wireless works 100%, um, everything just worked on this PC. By far the easiest Linux installation I've ever had in 10 years. Um, the graphics card, AMD, now I've, I'm familiar with AMD graphics cards, um, and I, you know, first knee-jerk reaction was to install the proprietary driver. However, I noticed right out of the gate that the open source Radeon driver was working phenomenal. Now Ubuntu has Ubuntu has a wiki, and it'll list a lot of different uh, it lists a lot of different ATI cards and their current feature list with the Radeon driver, the open source driver. And this particular card, the the Radeon HD sixty four fifty, is as of Ubuntu eleven ten is fully supported. So you've got your two D and three D acceleration works out of the box. Um, I mean, everything is blazing fast. Here in GNOME Shell, um, just going in and out of the menus. Now, I'm also doing a screencast. Everything just is extremely fluid. Um, no lags, no video tearing. I've watched DVDs on here. 
I've played MP4s, I've played um, AVIs, uh, I, I've played them all, all those different media fi uh, file formats using VLC, no video tears whatsoever. Um, extremely happy with the Radeon driver, the open source driver. I did try to install the proprietary driver just to see the difference, and it was terrible. I mean, extremely choppy, very, very laggy, and yes, I did install the one that came out, the, the most current, the one that came out on uh, January 25th, and still um, extremely choppy, very, very, very laggy. Um, maybe, you know, something like XFCE or LXDE, um, one of those um, less resource intensive and, um, you know, the interfaces don't, don't really use any type of 3D acceleration would, you know, those drivers may perform better. But um, as, of no, as of right now in GNOME Shell, the, the Radeon open source driver is the way to go. And good news, folks, those of you who are scared of graphics cards and installing proprietary drivers, the Radeon open source driver is included in the Linux kernel. So as soon as you install Ubuntu, you've already got this driver. So there is nothing else you have to do or set up. So all in all, if you're looking for a pre-configured machine um, at a really good price point, this particular machine ran me about $950. Now I did get a few people reply to me on Twitter when I announced that I got this machine that they found it for about $700 or $800. Be careful because there's a few iterations of the XPS 8300. Um, there's a couple of different i7 um, versions and there's an i5 version. Now there's an i7 version that doesn't have a, a wireless card in it. It has a 500 gigabyte hard drive as opposed to the one terabyte and it only has six gigs of RAM as opposed to the 12 gigs. Okay, so, um, and I believe there's another model as well, um, also an i7. So there's a few iterations of the 8300. Um, the, the important piece is making sure you get um, what's after the abbrevi uh, after the dash. It's 8300 dash. This is the 6206 BK. Okay, so if you are interested in this particular setup, it's the 8300 6206 BK. Can't say enough good things about it. Um, I really love this PC. It's performing really well. Again, whisper quiet, super powerful. Um, I can compile. Um, ice cream sandwich. I've done it in under 30 minutes, a full build without using Ccash. I compile the a Galaxy Nexus kernel in just over a minute. Um, extremely quick. So if you're looking for a good pre-configured system, for those of you who have never built a computer, uh, or maybe if you're familiar with building a computer, but you're looking for something, um, you know, maybe a little bit easier, like a pre-configured system that still has decent hardware. Um, I, this is it. This is it. This is for you. Um, I'm extremely happy. No buyer's remorse here. I'm glad I went with this PC, and um, I highly, highly recommend it, especially if you're running Linux. Um, it is a screamer. You will not be disappointed. So, guys, hopefully this helped you out. One quick thing I want to mention, those of you who are Ubuntu users, I recently made a blog post. Um, it's my Ubuntu cheat sheet. Basically, I used to have a just a simple text document that I would have on my Dropbox. And after I installed, did a fresh install of Ubuntu, what I would do is just sync my Dropbox and then, you know, just open that text file up and copy and paste because all my commonly used apps are up there. Um, certain PPAs I use uh, are up there. Little uh, tweaks, uh, tips, tricks, um, things you can easily copy and paste in the terminal and just hit enter and go. Um, those are all up there. It's what I use to get my system up and running. So if uh, any of you guys are interested, um, check the video description below and you'll see my blog. Um, head over there. Again, it's the most recent post. And um, tell me what you guys think uh, about the PC. If you have any questions whatsoever, again, just leave them in the comment section below. And um, hopefully this helped you guys out. And until next time, you guys are awesome. We'll see you later.